In today's lesson, we will learn how to factor a trinomial. What does it mean to factor a trinomial? To factor a trinomial means to express a trinomial as the product of two binomials. All right, so let's first review FOIL very quickly and notice, we will notice uh, some important pattern. So you already know how to do FOIL. So first we multiply the first terms. So it's going to be two, x square so that's first then we multiply um, outside right so we have 2x times negative 4 so it's negative 8x And then we have um, inside, which is three times x is plus three x. And then we have the last term, which is negative 12. Okay, so if we had to list this, we will have list two x squared. The outside term was negative x. The inside was positive three x. And the last one was negative 12. Okay, so we have listed them. For us, in this lesson, what will be very important is the middle term. How to get the middle term of a trinomial. So, if, of course, when we simplify this, we'll have 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. And this is the middle term of a trinomial. Okay, so FOIL should be very straightforward. All right, so what I would like you to do right now, I'll give you another example. And I would like you to just do outside and inside part of the FOIL for this um, multiplication. So we have a product of two binomials, but please just find the middle term of the trinomial that will end up that we will end up at the end. So you can pause the video right now, try it, and then uh, let's compare our answers. So I am very much interested in the outer and the inner, outside and inside uh, loop. So we're going to do something called double loop. So the outside loop, that's going to give me the outside term. So uh, that's uh, so 3x times 1 is 3x. And then I'm going to do the inside loop, which is negative 2 times 4. And that's going to give me negative 8x. All right, so that's double loop. You can see, you can call it double smile. You can add uh, something here and you'll have a double smile here. Anyway, but I am interested in these two terms because when we combine these two terms, they're going to give me a middle term of a trinomial in the final answer. So if you combine these two, 3x minus 8x should give me negative 5x. Okay, so we can quickly check it by uh, doing proper FOIL. So 3 times 4x is going to give me 12x squared. Then 3 times this one is plus 3x. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And combination of these two terms gives me the final term, which is negative 5x. And that's what I got. All right, so let's try another example. Um, how do we factor x squared plus x minus 20? Again, to factor trinomial means to express it as a, multi a multiplication of two binomials. So, we, what we're going to be using to do this type of work is a method called guess and check. And what it is, it's exactly it. You will be guessing combinations of numbers that will give you this answer. So again, 
why don't you pause the video and try to come up with two binomials that the product of these two binomials will give you this answer. Um, so pause the video, try it, and then restart it to compare our answers. All right, so how do we do this? All right, you've tried it. I'm not sure how long it took you. Um, and um, some of you might be much, uh, it's faster process for others, but we will going to give you a procedure to follow. So um, it's, you get to the answer faster since it's a guess and check. So there could be many, many options and combinations. So the first thing what you're going to do is um, you will look at the first term and you will find factors, two factors that multiply together to give you the first term. Okay, the answer over here is one, which is very simple. So it's going to be x times x, and it's fixed, it stays there. We will not change this again. Okay, next thing to do is to uh, look at the last term, and I see the last term is 20. I don't worry about this sign in front of it. I just see the number 20. Okay, and now I'm going to come up with factors that when multiplied together give me 20, factors of 20, okay? So I have some options, right? So what, some of the options are four and five, 10 and two, and um, another option is 20 and one, all right? So there are some of the options. Okay, so, but the rule of thumb will be always to start with the factors that are closest to each other, all right? So in this case, it means this combination, four and five. And then I'm going to write these two factors in these brackets. I'll put four here and five here. Again, I do not have signs here yet and I will establish them in a second. And that's why we're going to use something called double look, double smile. So first you will do the outside part, multiply these two terms, and you will get 5x, okay? Then you will do the inside loop, and you get 4x. The next step will be to find a combination of these two terms to give you the answer for the middle term, which is plus x. Okay, so if, we, if I were to add them together, 5x plus 4x, I will get 9x. That's not the good combination. If I were to sub subtract them, 5 minus 4, yes, that's what I will get. So, now I am going to decide on my signs. This is positive, and this one will be negative. And that was gonna give me a positive. So this is where I'm deciding on the signs. And I want you to notice a pattern that the positive sign corresponds to this positive, which means the sign of your middle term, middle term will always match the sign of the factor that is larger of the, in this pair. Okay, so now I need to trace these signs back into my uh, binomials. So again, you see the outer loop. So therefore, this is your outer loop. There was a positive sign. Therefore, I'm going to put plus here. And then you see the inner loop, which is negative sign here, I'm going to go back to my inner loop and I will trace it and I will just put it here, my negative. Now I have factor this expression. Okay, but it's, it's always good to check it, whether you got it right. So of course you will quickly do FOIL. This time x times x is x squared. The last term will be negative four times negative four times five is negative eight, so that worked. And my middle term will be outside, which is plus five x, and the inside, which is 
negative 4x and this combines together to give me 1x and that works okay so uh, just to go over it we always list factors for the first term first and then we try to list the factors for the last term but we will always choose the factors that are closest to one another and then when we kind of deciding on the signs we have to remember that the sign of the middle term corresponds um, to the sign of the larger of the two factors in the correct pair all right so that's example one let's try another example so how about this example okay all right so this example um again you can pause the video right now try to come up with two binomials that when multiplied together give you that expression, right? We are work, working kind of backwards. And then when you're ready, restart the video and we can compare our answers. All right, I will follow the same process as before. I will look at my first term, which is x squared and the only factors for one is, is one so it's going to be x times x and then i'm looking at my last term which is 12. so i need to come up with factors for 12. again i'm going to start with the closest four and three then six and two then 12 and one okay all right and that mean, now mean, it means that I have to choose the one that is closest together, which is 4 and 3. So I will do so. I will write 4 here and a 3 over here. All right. Now, I will do my double loop, double smile. So outside, it's going to give me 3x. And the inside will give me 4x. All right, now I need to find a combination of these two terms to give me the middle term. And my middle term is negative 4x. So what's the combination? Well, if I were to add them, I will get seven. If I were to uh, subtract them, if I were to make this one negative and this positive, I will get negative one. If I made this negative and this positive, I will po get positive one. If I will make both of them negative, I will get negative seven. Just none of them works, which means these factors were not correct. So it did, did not work. So my first guess did not work. And that's okay. That's why this method is called guess and check. So we try um, different options. However, in most of the cases, the first guess, the guess when you choose the closest factors should work, but sometimes it doesn't. So that's why you go to the next option. And your next option was x, sorry, we factor the first term, x and x, it's very easy to get the first, and then we look at the last one again it was 12 and we already chose this one it didn't work so now i'm going to the next option six and two so i'm going to put six over here and two over here i'm going to do double loop this and this gives me 2x and then i go to the inner loop and i get 6x. All right. Now I need to decide on the signs. So I will look at my answer for the middle term of my trinomial, which is negative 4x. Good. And now I need to come up with a combination to give me negative 4x. You also know that the sign of this middle term will always be the sign of the larger factor for this correct pair. So over here, I'll put minus 
and this one will be plus. And now I have a correct combination. And now I just have to trace those signs back into my brackets. So I go for the outside loop. It's here, and that sign will be carried along the outside loop, so it's here. And then I will go in the inside loop and carry it over here, so I see, so it's going to be right over here. And now again, the last step is to quickly double check whether you got it right. So x times x is x squared, last term negative six times positive two is negative 12, and then negative six plus two gives you negative four, which is the middle term. All right, hopefully that's clear. All right, so um, let's keep going. Let's try another example, okay? So this would be your other example. So again, this is a good time to pause the video and try to do it through and guess and check. Um, and then restart the video to compare. Again, it's, I will give you some strategies how to do this question. Um, all right, so, so let's do this question. Um, so again, we list the factors for the first term first term. Um, it's easy. It's only two. So the only combination is 2x and 1x. And it stays. It's frozen. We do not change this anymore. Then we are going to look at the last term. Last term is 12. Therefore, we have some options. We, we already know the factors of 12 is 4, 3, 6, 2, 12, 1. It seems like 12 is my favorite number. I'm using it so much. All right, so um, what's the rule? The next rule is choose the pair that is closest to each other. So I'm going to choose this pair, okay? Now, there are two options though. I can put 4 here and 3 here or I could put three here and four here. Those are two different guesses, two different options. So if I were to guess, put first guess like this, four and three, okay? That would be one of them. But I right away know that this is incorrect. And the way you will know that is incorrect, if, if you look inside the bracket and you will see that there is a common factor. If there is a common factor, then that's wrong. So we will not choose this option, okay? So we'll go for the other option. It's still, you have two X, you still have X, but I'm actually going to put three over here and four over here. Now I do not have a common factor here and I do not have a common factor here. And this is probably going to be correct. So please remember, never common factor in the same bracket. All right, so let's keep doing it, uh, following our steps. So once I have all this, I am going to do my double loop. Outside gives me 8x. Inside gives me 3x. And what will be the combination to give me a middle term? Maybe the term is negative 11x. So, well, the only way I can think of it that will give me this one is when I add them together, but both of them will have to have negative sign. This and this one together will give me negative 11. And then I'll trace the signs back. Of course, over here, I don't need to worry about it too much because both of the signs are the same. So both of the signs in the brackets will be the same, but let's keep consistent outside. So the negative goes here and then inside the negative goes here. 
All right. And hopefully that's the correct answer. And you're going to check it by expanding. 2 times this one is 2x squared. Last term is negative 3 times negative 4 is positive uh, 12. And then the middle term was negative 3x and negative 2 times negative 4, negative 8x. And that gave you negative 11. So it works. All right. So let's do another example. Okay, as we go along, it's getting harder. All right, so let's do this one again. Pause your video and try it. Try different combos and then restart the video and we will compare our answers. Okay, so you probably try it and you probably seen that there's many different uh, combinations. Uh, but again, I will provide you with some strategies how to do it quickly by doing, the, by doing this process, guess and check. So the first thing to do is to list the factors for uh, your first term. And now it's kind of hard because you have 12 here for your first term, which means you have a number of combinations right? Um, then we know this combination is 4 times 3, uh, 2 times 6, and 12 times 1. And um, again, I'm using 12 here, uh, but it could have been any other number. So now the first term has many op of, um, options, but the rule is always the same. You always choose the one closest together. So we're going to put 4x and 3x. All right. Next step is to look at the last term. The last term is also 12. Those also are the factors. So which ones do we choose? The rule is always choose the one closest together. OK, so if I were to write four here and three here, hopefully you're starting seeing some problem. If I were to write four x, four, and three x, and three, you will see that there is a problem. The problem, of course, is there is a common factor in this bracket and common factor in this bracket. So that will definitely not work. So the other option is to write 3 here and 4 here. And we will hope that it will work. So let's check. Uh, we'll go to our outside loop. That's going to give me 16x. Then you go to your inside loop, which gives you 9x. And the final answer for the middle term is supposed to be positive 7x. So I need to find combination. Well, you already know that the sign here will correspond to a sign of a larger number in this pair. So this is going to be positive and this is to, going to be negative. And then I'm going to trace it back, these signs, to my brackets. Positive was for outside loop. So it goes here. Oops. I changed the color. Positive. And then negative was for the inside loop. So the inner loop, so it goes here. And again, we're going to do this question to see if we got it right. 4x times 3x is 12x squared, so 4x squared. Then we're going to do the last one is 4, negative 3 times uh, positive 4 is negative 12, so it seems to be working. And the middle term is outside, which is plus 4x, and the inside, I'm oh, sorry, 4 times 4 is 16x, and this and this is negative 9x, and this combined together should give me 7x. So yes, it's correct. 
I am on the right track. All right, so hopefully you're remembering this rule. Never state a binomial that has a common factor. All right, let's do one more example. This one. 16 minus 6x minus x squared. As you can see, it is written a little bit differently. So again, pause the video, try it, and then restart to check our answers. All right, so this question is written differently, but we will follow the same steps. All right, so first thing to do, I always take the care of the one with a exponent of two. So, um, so x squared usually is written the first, now it's written the, as a last term. So I will, but I will still take care of this one first. So I'll say x times x is going to give me x squared. Then I'm going to look at this first term. Um, usually it's written at the end, but I'm just going to look at this as a first term. And then I'm going to find factors for 16. So I have 4 and 4. I have 8 and 2 and 16 and 1. Again, I'm going to follow a rule to always write the one that I the, uh, write the factors that are closest together first. So I'm going to choose this option. So if I write 4 here and 4 here, let's see what will work. I am going to do a double loop again. So outside, uh, sorry, my outside is here. So that's going to give me 4x. And then inside also gives me 4x. So now let's find a combination that will give me a middle term of my trinomial negative 6x. Well, I can add them, I will get 8. I subtract them, I will get 0. I'll make one both negative, I will get negative 8. It just doesn't work. So this option does not work. This is not the right guess. Sometimes it happens. So then we know we have to go for the second guess, which is this one. So we will have x here and x here. And then I'll write 8 over here and 2 over here. And now I need to come up with the signs. So we do our double loop. This times this one gives me 8x, inner loop gives me 2x, the answer for the middle term is negative 6x. So the combination is, again I'm applying a rule that the sign of this number will always match the sign of a larger number. So you put them together and this it works and then I follow my loop just like before. I've, this is negative for the outside, this is negative for the outside, so I'm going to put my negative here. This is positive for the inner loop, so this is my inner loop, so I put a positive over here. And then I quickly check. A times 2 is 16. My last term is x times negative x is negative x squared. And my middle term will be 8 times negative x is negative 8x. And this will give me positive 2x. And the combination of those ones gives me negative x, which is great. All right, so last one. The last example for this lesson. Try to factor this one. x squared plus x plus 1. Pause the video. Try it and then compare the answers. All right, so how are we going to? It seems very simple, this question, because um, first number, all right, the first number is uh, one and the last number is one. The, what are the factors of one? Just one. So you will write x 
and x. And then for the last one, there's only one possibility, one and one. All right, then you will do your double loop. So you have outside, which is one x. Then you will do inside, which is one x. And the answer has to be positive one x. So what is the combination that will give you this answer? If you make them both positive, you'll get two. If you make them both negative, you get negative two. If you make one positive, one negative, you'll get zero. So none of these combinations work. Therefore, this will not work. Therefore, this question is impossible to factor. So it's not possible. So you might encounter some of the questions that you will not be able to factor because it cannot be done. Anyway, I hope this is uh, sufficient for you to start doing and practicing factoring of trinomials. Simple and complex. All right.